Hey guys, my name is Frank and this is the Pothon Programming Video Log and today I'm going to talk about how to get the angle between two two-dimensional vectors in degrees and radians. So here are my two two-dimensional vectors. Right now they're at 90 degrees apart. The angle is 90 degrees in there in that acute angle inside. Uh, here we can see the output. If I move this, my angle is going to change and it goes all the way from zero, if I can get that, zero, all the way up to 180 degrees. Now, you might expect it to go to 360 on the other side, but actually what these equations do, and they both do the same exact thing, they get the uh, the angle in radians, both of these, well, when you add this on, it gets them in degrees, but this main part here gets the angle in radians, and then we convert it to degrees, but we're going to get the acute angle with both of those equations. So the acute angle is going to be the smaller of the two angles formed by these two vectors. We have the obtuse angle out here, and we have the acute angle in here. So we're just going to get the acute angle and output it as our angle. So if we want to convert to 360, we're just going to add this conditional, but let's talk about what goes into these equations first. So let's talk about our cosine. Arc cosine is cool because you can see pretty much all the math that goes into it aside from the arc cosine part. We can see what we need to do for dot product and to get the length and then this little ratio between degrees and radians right here. So let's take a look at what goes into dot product. Dot product is really simple. We're just going to do v0.x times v1.x plus v0.y times v1.y. Then we're going to divide the dot product by the product of the length of each vector. So v0.length times v1.length. If you already have length calculated, this is an excellent way to go. Arc cosine is a great way to go, but if you don't, then you're going to have to use square root to get the length. Let's take a look at the length formula. We've got square root of the square of the x component of the vector plus the square of the y component of the vector. Square root is kind of expensive, so doing two of them every time you want to calculate angle is not great, especially if you have a lot of angles that you're calculating. That's why a lot of people prefer this a tan 2 method down here. So just to recap, we have dot product divided by the product of the two lengths, and we're going to use arc cosine to get the degree in radians. Then we're going to use this 1a divided by pi ratio to convert that degree in radians to just a degree in degrees. I guess you can't call it a degree in radians because radians is its own kind of degree, but that's going to convert radians to degrees, and this is just going to get the radians. A tan 2 is preferable because obviously if you don't have these lengths pre-calculated, you don't have to use math.square root or just square root to get the length here. All you're going to get is the cross product and the dot product. So A tan 2, they call it A tan 2 because there's two parameters. It takes a Y component and an X component. Here for the Y component, we're going to get the absolute value of the cross product between our two vectors. So let's take a look at cross product. It's just going to be v0.x times v1.y minus v0.y times v1.x. That's going to be our y component. Make sure you remember to eliminate any signage on it. So it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. We're just going to make it positive all the time. Then we're going to hand in dot product for the x component, and that's it. So I was reading online about a tan 2, and a lot of people prefer it. And I think the reason is because it eliminates those square root calls, and it's said to be more efficient. Now this depends on your usage. If you already have these defined, go ahead and use this. It's probably just fine. If you don't, it's probably better to use this. Uh, some languages I've read don't have an a tan 2 function, but most of them have the arc cosine, so this is probably a little bit safer, but you know what? Just use whichever one depending on what application you know, you're going for. So finally, the math is pretty straightforward for both of these. Let's talk about this 180 divided by pi ratio back here. Now 180 divided by pi is just a way to convert from radians to degrees. If I were to convert from degrees to radians, I would just do pi divided by 180. So what's the significance of this little part of the equation right here? 180 is going to be half of a unit circle. Just like pi in radians is going to be half of the unit circle. A full unit circle has 360 degrees in it, so if I were to go like this, I would be making a full 360 degree circle. Well, I would be doing the same thing for radians. If I were to go from 0 pi all the way to 2 pi, that's going to be a full unit circle in radians. So I could just as easily have here 360 divided by 2 pi, but to avoid that extra multiplication by 2, I'm just going to do 180 divided by pi. I could also just as easily do 90 divided by pi times 
0.5, but that's also extra multiplication, so we just do 180 divided by pi. Okay, so now we know that we're calculating the acute angle between our two vectors. How do we get these vectors to go all the way from 0 to 360 instead of just up to 180 on each side? Well, that's going to be this conditional statement right here, and this is another cool thing about ATAN2. If you're going to use the ATAN2 approach, you're already going to have to calculate cross product, and you can use cross product again right here in this conditional. So let's go ahead and take a look at the source code. So I'm going to switch over to the ATAN2 method. I have it commented out here because I'm just using the arc cosine method right now. So let's comment this back in, and let's go ahead and comment in our conditional. And I'm just going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to refresh my page. I'm going to choose the angle example. And now we can see we're going to go all the way from 0, past 90, past 180, all the way to 270, and finally up to 360. And that's the benefit of this little conditional statement right here. Now, how do we do this? So let's take a look at this side right here. We're already going to have the angle calculated from 0 to 180 on both sides. So these, these stay the same. We're still going to get 0 to 180 on each side using these equations. We're going to then take the value we get, and we're going to run it through this right here. So we're just going to do 360 if the cross product is less than 0, which means if, in this case, we're going to be doing this side. If I were to change this around so it was greater than 0, I would be getting 360 on this side. So right now, the way this is set up, I'm taking the angle on this side. If I were to change this sign, I'd be getting the angle on this side. So that's a cool thing to note right there, but let's just take a look at what we have here. I've got 92. Let's say that this was a greater than sign and I was still on this side. If I had 92, or let's actually just try to get 90 if we can. Let's get 90, make it a nice good number there. 360 divided by 90 is going to be 270. So let's say we started at zero here we went all the way to 90, then we went to 180, we would go to 270. So that's how you get to 270. So right now, this same thing is working for this side. So let's see what we get on the other side when we have 90. We're going to get 270. Now to prove what I was talking about, let me just go ahead in the code and just reverse this sign right here. I'm going to make it greater than 0. I'm going to save. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to refresh going to hit my angle example. Now I'm getting the angle on this side, and I'm going to have 270 over here. If I come all the way back down, I'm going to get 0 to 90 to 180 to 270 to 360. So that is how we get the angle. Let's take a look at the code in here. Um, dot product and cross product are calculated up top. Same thing as length of my vectors. Dot product, like I said, very simple. x times x plus y times y of our different vectors. Cross product is v0.x times v1.y plus v0.y times v1.x. The length, this is those math, this is those, these are the math dot square root functions that you want to avoid if you can. Square root's kind of costly. So with our cosine, you're gonna be using this unless you already have to calculate the length of your vectors, in which case go ahead and use arc, arc cosine because it's not a big deal. If you already have to calculate the length, you're already going to have to have that expensive square root in there. You might as well use it. Um, but pretty simple. x squared plus y squared, you get the square root of it, you get the length of a vector. Here we're going to calculate the angle with uh, math.arc cosine. Let me scroll over here. We can take a look at this. We're going to do the dot product divided by the product of the lengths of the vectors. Then we're going to convert it from radians to degrees with this little chunk right here. Um, let's go down a little bit. Here we're going to do math.atan2 or arctangent2. We're going to get the absolute value of the cross product between our two vectors, which we calculate right here. We're going to also get the dot product for the x parameter of our atan2 function. This is the y parameter first, then the x parameter. So we're going to do math.abs cross product and then just the dot product multiplied by our little conversion to get degrees from radians. And there we go, we have that 0 to 180 degree angle that we were looking at earlier. Then finally we're going to throw this in, and this is going to give us a full 360 degrees. And then finally down here I have the output. 
So anyway, guys, there you have it. That is how you calculate the angle between two vectors. You can go ahead and use whichever equation you feel is best fit for your application. Anyway, I hope you guys learned something. Come on back and we'll do some more vector math.